The aim of my recent research project was to investigate fibrinogen in Alzheimer's disease. So fibrinogen is a normal protein that's found in the blood, it's involved in clotting. But proteins like fibrinogen and other plasma proteins, we call them, are very tightly regulated in the brain so that they can't leak out into the brain tissue. And this is regulated by something called the blood-brain barrier. But this can become damaged in blood vessel disease, and we know that when this becomes damaged, we have leakage of substances like fibrinogen. So it's a good indicator of damage to the blood vessels. But recently, there's been a lot of studies that have shown that in demented and Alzheimer's disease groups, that there's, inc there's an increase in fibrinogen in the brain tissue. And this has led to the proposed investigation of fibrinogen as a biomarker of Alzheimer's disease. So it was whether this is true or not, because as a pathologist, so I work with human tissue, my observations are we see the tissue very close up in great detail that is this necessarily true because I see it in both normal aged individuals who don't have dementia and in Alzheimer's disease so the question was is this typical of Alzheimer's disease or do we see it in normal in aged individuals as well. So the methods that I use um, implement human tissue so I work at Newcastle University and we're privileged enough to have the Newcastle Brain Tissue Resource, the Brain Bank, which is also part of Brains for Dementia Research. So we receive donated brains from people who during life have had dementia um, or also normal aged as well so we can look in great detail at the actual underlying disease of these brains. And the most important thing is that we can have a definitive diagnosis. So that's the difference between clinical and pathological research is because it's right at the end of the disease, we can confirm that it was Alzheimer's disease or vascular disease, etc. So we're in that privileged position where we know our cohort was Alzheimer's disease. So using this tissue, we investigated the relationship between fibrinogen that had leaked out into the tissue and was this associated with the vessel disease that we saw, was this associated with damage and more importantly was it associated with the amount of Alzheimer's disease pathology and the progression that we saw in these cases. We used quantitative neuropathology in order to do this which is where we actually measured the exact amount of pathology rather than just say this was mild, moderate, severe. So with that great detail we can unravel these questions. So the results of this study showed that there was absolutely no difference between the amount of fibrinogen between non-demented controls and those who had Alzheimer's disease. So by simply measuring fibrinogen alone we were unable to determine whether someone would have an Alzheimer's disease diagnosis. Furthermore we found no relationship between the amount of fibrinogen and the the burden, the actual amount of amyloid or tau, and as well as the, progress the progression of the disease. So by and all, it was not an indicator of Alzheimer's disease pathology or progression. Interesting, what we did find was that fibrinogen was highly associated with the amount of vessel disease. And also we found uh, the data indicated that there might be an additional mechanism in the Alzheimer's disease group in the blood vessels. So, uh, we think it's related to cerebral amyloid angiopathy, which is the, where amyloid deposits in the blood vessels. And this is seen in approximately at least 80% of Alzheimer's disease cases. So the conclusion in it was that fibrinogen was not indicative of an Alzheimer's disease diagnosis in the pathology, but it is indicative of vessel disease overall. We can't exactly say whether it is because of fibrosis and, and degenerative changes or the de deposition of amyloid, but overall it is vessel disease importantly that is not exclusive to an Alzheimer's disease diagnosis. So I think in order to further this research we would have to now translate this into cerebral spinal fluid markers. If we want to see this as a biomarker that's the way we need to go. So do the same results withstand in the, the, the cerebral spinal fluid that we would take from patients, not necessarily measured in the human tissue. And again, at the Newcastle Brain Tissue Resource as part of BDR, we actually take CSF samples from the brains as they are donated. So we do have some of them stored away, which it would be interesting to see if the results are the same with, with the biomarkers in the spinal fluid.